the presidential race, where one candidate has uh, just taken a big step toward making his campaign great again. It's a big shakeup for the Donald Trump campaign just weeks before the Republican convention is set to begin. Trump's campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, is out. Lewandowski has been part of Trump's inner circle from the very beginning, from even before day one. He is part of that sort of original group of Trump supporters who were with him since he came down that escalator at Trump Tower. Ah, uh, yes, the escalator that brought us Trump. It almost seems like whoever was on that escalator ride got to be part of the Trump campaign. It doesn't seem like they were planned. Like, Trump was just riding and going, who is this guy? I like his style. I like him. He's on. Uh, <laughs> sir, that is the escalator railing. Yeah, I want him on the campaign. I need more black support. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, sir, I don't think you can... Hurry, he's getting away! He's getting away! <laughs> so, it appears. Corey Lewandowski's grip on power was not as strong as his grip on young female reporters. And, uh, I can only imagine what it must have been like for him when Donald Trump told him that he was off the campaign. You know, Lewandowski probably walked into the conference room. Trump was sitting in a big chair behind a mahogany <laughs> table. And Trump looked at him and said, Corey, your services are no longer necessary. <laughs> You're a liability to the campaign and need to leave. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. You're fired up and that'll serve you well in the future. <laughs> oh, and you're fired. Uh, now, firing his controversial campaign manager as he pivots to the general election may be one of the smartest decisions this entire campaign. And just like most of Trump's other smart decisions, it turns out someone else made it. We hear from sources inside the campaign that it really was Donald Trump's children who were respons responsible for the, uh, the final decision. First and foremost, I'm told that it was his daughter, Ivanka. She said, either he goes or I can't do this anymore. Wow. Ivanka with the ultimatum. <laughs> it's either him or me. <laughs> I mean, when she puts it that way, it's really no choice for Donald Trump at all. Because, I mean, let's face it. He can't fire his daughter, and he can't bang his campaign manager. <laughs> so... Now, there, there may be many reasons why Ivanka wanted to get rid of Lewandowski. I mean, one of them could be that under his management, Trump's polls have dropped faster than Carly Fiorina on a podium. <laughs> and... and... it's not just in the polls. Some of the most high-profile Republican lawmakers declined to go anywhere near the latest round of comments from Donald Trump. I'm Said late for it, so... They'll duck into offices. I've got a quick uh, I know you do. Cut off interviews. Don't think we're doing any Trump questions this week. And they'll avoid uttering his name. Majority Whip John Cornyn is done talking about Trump until after the election. Yeah, I'm not going to be commenting on the presidential candidate today. It seems that, like, the, it's now I don't want to comment and we have to run out the clock here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our world. These senators look like such idiots ducking into random rooms, you know? That's all they're doing the whole time, just to avoid talking about Trump. Like, if I was them, I would just make sure that I'm carrying something I can eat the entire time. And then if the reporters jumped out and were like, sir, can we ask you about Donald Trump? Senator, Senator, what do you think about Trump? I'd just be like, oh, mm, 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 mm. Senator, what are you eating? Oh, it's a dick, it's a dick. I'm eating a dick. <laughs> I'm eating a dick. I didn't want a, a dick. And you know, the truth is, it's easy to see why Republicans don't want to be associated with Donald Trump. I mean, he keeps giving them reasons. Just like last week, when he let everyone know that he's getting the ban back together. I called for a ban after San Bernardino and was met with great scorn and anger. But many are saying that I was right to do so. And although the pause is temporary, we must find out what is going on. We have to do it. We have to stop people from pouring into our country. We have to stop it. Until we find out what the hell is going on. Look, man, anyone who's been in a relationship will tell you there's no such thing as a temporary ban. You don't temporarily pause anything. If someone ever tells you that they want to take a temporary pause, you're single. <laughs> Yeah, Trump insists it's temporary. It's like, what, after seven months, he's gonna come and be like, Muslims, Muslims, it's cool now. I figured out what was going on. <laughs> come on back. It turns out there's a very small subset of radical Wahhabists who believe in violent jihad, and that has nothing to do with the vast majority of peaceful Muslims. Why didn't anyone tell me?
It's obvious. It's obvious why Trump is having such a tough month. It's because he won't stop saying crazy <laughs> all the time. <laughs> this, this was Trump's big thought on how the Orlando shooting could have been stopped. Trump, endorsed by the National Rifle Association, said that if some club goers had been armed, the tragedy could have been less horrific. If some of those wonderful people had guns strapped right here, right to their waist or right to their ankle, and one of the people in that room happened to have it and goes boom, boom, you know what? That would have been a beautiful, beautiful sight, folks. Boom, boom, <laughs> right in the floor. I'm, I'm sorry, but if you ever think that someone being shot, whether criminal or otherwise, can be described as a beautiful, beautiful sight, you are one deranged <laughs> You're not describing a killing. You're describing a sunset. Like, Donald Trump, what is wrong with you? You know, now, now Republicans who are really nervous about Trump's candidacy do actually have another option. You see, we found this out, but on Friday, uh, a former Trump advisor told Politico that he thinks Donald Trump would drop out of the race if someone offered him $150 million. Yeah, which I know sounds like a Kickstarter waiting to happen, but, but, there's a catch. I hear these, like, little rumors. He wants $150 million. Can you believe this? You could offer me five times that amount, and I wouldn't do it. One of the people was supposedly quoted, he might do it for $5 billion. Now, for $5 billion, I guess we have to think about it, right? I love how Trump's honesty always betrays him. <laughs> yeah, he can't, he can't hold it in, because most politicians know, because it's fictional money, you should turn it down in a sanctimonious manner that makes you look patriotic. You gotta be like, there's no amount of money that can buy my pride. You can't buy America. And Trump's like, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Trump, what are you doing? It's fictional money. It doesn't matter. All my money is fictional money. <laughs> now I'll have 15 billion fictional dollars! Hey there, thanks for watching. If you like that video, click below to subscribe or click here to delete the internet. Yes, you found the button. Please be careful. Delete the entire internet right here.